another ants on a rock video welcome to the ant corner massive multi-species vivarium episode 9 night vision and massive nest expansion hey there ant fans and welcome to my massive multi-species vivarium at night i use this red light to view it so not to disrupt the insects and inhabitants of the vivarium most of them can't see the red light spectrum so they go about quite happily and undisturbed at night time the whole tank changes the beetles become more active and so do the millipedes. In this tank, I have three different species of millipedes, two red tie flats, two giant olives, and five bumblebee millipedes. And as you can see, they're very active at night. The ants seem to recede back a little bit in the evenings, not completely, and they are still wandering about and eating, but they do recede back to the nest just a bit and allow the other insects and inhabitants to take over the lands. Isopods appear out of every crack and crevice. Springtails start jumping about madly. Worms crawl through the soils. Millipedes and beetles come and destroy any remaining food from around the feeding areas. And the beetles finally get a meal without getting attacked. You may notice the lack of the presence of snails. I did have a snail in the tank, but he decided to work his way up through the barrier that contains the ants, taking off half of the barrier overnight, leaving me a bit of an issue in the morning with ants crawling all over the top of the tank. Obviously, I managed to sort this without too much of a hassle, but I did remove the snail due to this being a problem in the future.
The isopod population in the tank has absolutely exploded and I think this is just due to all the remains and leftover bits of exoskeleton that have been fed on. Everything that gets left by the ants and they do eat a lot but they leave a lot of exoskeletons is the baby one which I thought was really cute if you can see him. There's quite a lot of little baby ones and they are so small and tiny compared to even a normal size isopod. There you go. Which are obviously small as they are. But yeah, the isopod population's gone absolutely nuts and at night is the best time to really witness it. They fully take over the lands. and still happily living are our stick insects which I wasn't sure how they were going to do in the tank but they definitely seem to be doing fine and they're helping keep cutting back the uh, thornless blackberry bushes which they eat on so that saves me having to cut them back as often which is really handy now that there's getting more and more ants in the tank and it's getting harder to do stuff in And I've been really lucky to capture some great footage of the crab coming out onto the land during night. He ventures all around the tank and I've seen him completely over in the isopod corner, probably trying to catch a meal. And that's over the other side of the tank, the very other side. But here he is, just on the hillside above his pond. Now moving on to my polyvacus dives and their massive nest expansion. Here's a quick time lapse of me feeding them just whilst I tell you about what I've done. So, as I said, they did manage to get out at one point, and since then, just the odd worker seems to be getting out every now and then, and I wasn't really sure why. So, looking into it, it looks like they were expanding to the left of where their nest already was, onto the next branch. So what I have gone about doing is adding a whole new section of what you could call nesting scaffolding to their nest site area and that is the bit of wood that you can see here now as you can see it is kind of gnarly large open space in the middle of it it's kind of like a claw so it's actually stretched out between all the different nest sections going down onto the jug into the back of the glass and pretty much connecting up all the different nest sections so i'm pretty sure they will take to it and build on it fairly soon as you can see there's already some of the polyracus dives exploring it they seemed very excited by the prospects of this new scaffolding Coming back the next morning and again it was teeming but you could see they were starting to collect debris which means building project has begun. Absolutely teeming with ants and it was so interesting to watch. I didn't film it all but I came back every couple of hours and just got a few more minutes of footage for you. So I'm going to speed you through all of that and we'll see how it turns out.
as you can see they've done an awesome job in just the space of a day and they've completely filled in the underneath section which was hollow and they've got several entrances around the nest and they're still using their larvae to produce their silk and weave their nest it is how the weaver ants do it after feeding the larvae a fair bit of protein a worker will carry the larvae about like you can see here and it will stimulate it with their antennae to produce silk and they use it to weave the bits of debris into place and as it dries it dries quite firm and holds it into place but it does take a fair bit of protein for this so they always always hungry As you can see the building work hasn't really stopped yet and they're still going now and this was last week. They are probably going to fill in all the spare space and all the different areas connecting it fully to the nests they've already built. This gives them great gradient of different humidity and heat which is perfect for growing their brood. It also gives them the ample space they require and hopefully they won't feel the need to move out of the tank. And I got this clip because I thought it was really cool. This polyrachis dive caught what looks like a fly or a mosquito or something. And he's really proud and showing off to another worker before he drags it back to the nest to be eaten. I thought it was really cool. And I got the footage, so here you go. I just want to show you some more clips of my cool isopod population as well. They like say they tend to go for all the leftover exoskeletons that are left over from the ant. Here's a beetle having a go as well. The isopods do actually fight between themselves. They're quite uh, nippy and they can be quite possessive about the food that they are eating. They are quite partial to a bit of cucumber. I expect that's due to moisture. I've also tried them on sweet potato and courgette as well, which is advice from someone who knows a lot about isopods and keeping these sorts of species so obviously I took that advice straight away again there's a little baby isopod look how small and cute that is pale white so pretty pretty young that one pretty young they also quite enjoy a bit of banana that I've recently been trying with them I've also tried tomatoes and peppers and most other vegetables which all seem to be eaten quite happily they're not fussy eaters really. These are the standard tropical grey isopods. Really good cleanup crew, really easy to care for and keep, and they do get along quite well with the polyrachis dives and everything else. The only problem with having such a large isopod population is you have to keep them fed, otherwise they're gonna start eating the millipedes and other insects that are in there when they are vulnerable and shedding. But I haven't experienced this yet because I just ram the tank full of food all the time. And that is the trick. Just keep everyone in there well fed and you shouldn't find that there's too much fighting. Obviously if this was in the wild it might be slightly different as food resources can become more scarce and fighting outbreaks will occur. Especially if numbers match what they are in the tank. If I was a hungry ant army and I saw an army of isopods, now that's probably, you know, it's going to be worth going for them. So it is important to maintain the food supply in this tank. The other thing isopods require is a source of calcium to reproduce their shells. 
So every now and then I just chuck in a bit of eggshell from whenever I'm doing some baking or something at home. And they seem to go really nuts with that as well. But right now they were going nuts with some protein. So if you've enjoyed this episode or any of my other content, feel free to press that subscribe button and follow my future videos. I'd really appreciate a comment below and I try and answer all as well. So please do keep in contact and let me know what you think, any suggestions or any thoughts as well. I also have a Discord server that you're all welcome to join and speak to me directly. The link is in the description below. But I'm going to leave you there with this bit of footage and as always, I'll see you again Ant fans.